This is Gina from RN2 Professors with a video for you on my Dimensional Analysis for Nursing series. In this video, I'm going to focus on medical math problems that you will see in OB nursing. These questions will include injection and IV problems. In this video, I'm going to use dimensional analysis to solve common medical math problems that you will encounter in nursing school. This video focuses on problems that you will likely see in OB nursing. These questions will include injection and IV problems. One of the first things that you need to know to solve any medical math problem is dosage calculation conversions. I have a list of common ones on this page. To get a free cheat sheet, go to our Facebook page and look in the file section. The link is listed below in the descriptions. There you will also find additional quizzes and test taking tips. Also, make sure to subscribe and click the bell below to get notified when additional videos are released. Now let's take a look at our first problem. Magnesium sulfate 30 grams is mixed in 500 milliliters of lactated ringers. The order is to infuse a maintenance dose of magnesium sulfate at 4 grams an hour. How many milliliters an hour will the IV run? We will use dimensional analysis to set up this problem. We're not going to use any conversions in this problem because we have grams in both the order and in what is supplied. This is what our problem looks like. In dimensional analysis, we start with the units of measure or what was ordered. In this case, we have four grams an hour for our order. We wanna make sure that we can convert it to what the answer is asking for. In this case, milliliters per hour. In our supply dose, we already have grams and milliliters, so we'll be able to cancel out the grams without adding in an extra conversion. We start out with the four grams an hour, and then the next part is our known volume, known dosage that we got from our problem here. And since we work across diagonally, we put grams on the bottom so we can cross out that unit and we're left with milliliters an hour, which is what we want for our answer. So we multiply across the top, four times 500 is 2000, one times 30 is 30, 2,000 divided by 30 is 66.66 repeating, and so we are going to round that up to 67, and our answer is 67 milliliters per hour for this question. Let's go on to our next question. The health practitioner caring for a pregnant client diagnosed with gonorrhea writes the following order. Cefetrexone, 250 milligrams IM times one dose. The medication is available in one gram vials and the nurse adds eight milliliters of normal saline to the vial. How many milliliters of the medication should the nurse administer? Calculate to the nearest whole number. For this problem, we are going to have to convert milligrams into milliliters. So one of the first things that we're gonna to need to know to set up this problem is how many grams are in milligrams. We know that there is one gram in a thousand milligrams because this is in our conversion charts. Using dimensional analysis, we'll set up the problem. First set of numbers in our problems is our starting units or measure or what was ordered. And that was the 250 milligrams. Next, we need to convert from milligrams to grams because that is what is in our supplied order. We know that there is one gram in a thousand milligrams. Make sure that we put the milligrams diagonal each other so that we can cross those units out. We're left with grams, but we still have to get to milliliters. In our supplied medication that was given to us, we have grams and milliliters. So we can use that to cross out the grams. We put that in, again, we put grams on the bottom. We want it diagonal so we can cross those units out, cross out grams, and we're left with milliliters, which is what our answer is to be in. So we can go ahead and solve. 250 times one times eight is 2,000. One times 1,000 times 1,000 is 1,000. 2,000 divided by 1,000 is two. And our answer is two milliliters. Let's go on to our next question. 
The client is receiving an IV heparin drip at 16 milliliters an hour via an infusion pump for a diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis. The label on the half bag liter of D5W indicates 25,000 units of heparin have been added. How many units of heparin is the client receiving per hour? Calculate to the nearest hole. In this question, our answer you needs to be in units per hour. So we need to go from milliliters to units per hour. One of the first things we'll need to know for conversion is how many milliliters are there in a liter? We know that there is a thousand milliliters in a liter because of our conversion chart. This is how we're going to set up this problem in dimensional analysis. And here is what our problem looks like. First step of the problem is the starting unit of measure or what was ordered. In this case, we're looking at 16 milliliters an hour. We're going to convert with liters and milliliters. Again, we're going to put the milliliters diagonal each other so that they can cross out. So cross out the milliliters here for our conversion. Now we're left with liters per hour, but we want to get to units per hour. The next part of our formula is the known dosage and known volume, what we've been supplied with. So we know that there are 25,000 units of heparin in a half liter bag of D5W. Liters are diagonal each other, again, so that we can cross these units out. And now we're left with units per hour, which is what we want for our answer. So we can go ahead and multiply across. 16 times 1 times 25,000 is 400,000. 1 times 1,000 times a half is 500. 400,000 divided by 500 is 800. And our eight answer is 800 units an hour. On to the next question. A woman 40 weeks gestation has had ruptured membranes for 15 hours with no labor contractions. Her obstetrician has ordered 10 units of oxytocin to be diluted in 1,000 milliliters of lactated ringers. The order reads, administer oxytocin IV at 0.5 milliliters per minute. Calculate the drip rate for the infusion pump to be programmed. Calculate to the nearest whole number. We have a couple of things going on with this problem. We will not only have to do a conversion uh, with units, but we will also have to do a time conversion because we're starting off in minutes and we need to end in hours. So the question is asking us to be in milliliters per hour. And right now we are in milliunits per minute. With these, I like to start off with my time conversion first. So let's take a look how, how we're gonna set up this problem. First, we need to know what our conversion is. And in this problem, we're gonna wanna know units in milliunits. And we have one unit in a thousand milliunits. To set this up in dimensional analysis, the problem is going to look like this. When I set this problem up, I like to put the hours and minutes over to the left of my starting units of measure just because I like how it looks in the end. It's easier for me to read. You can do it any way that you would like. Starting off, this second one here is our starting unit of measure, or what was ordered, which is the 0.5 milliunits per minute, which we've gotten from our question right here. But we're going to need this to be in hours. So I'm going to put this conversion over to the left side here. And we do 60 minutes over an hour because, again, working diagonally, we want to cross out the minutes and be left with hours. So right now we're at milliunits per hour, and we need to be at milliliters per hour. So to do that, we need our conversion. First, we need to switch milliunits to units. And then we'll use our conversion that we got from our conversion table right here to put into the problem to do that conversion. Again, milliunits will go on the bottom so they're diagonal from each other and they can cross out. Now we are at units per hour and again we need to get to milliliters per hour. In our known volume and dosage, 
we have a thousand milliliters of Ringer's lactate that has 10 units of oxytocin. We've got that again from our question right here. Units goes opposite to the other units, so we can cross this out. And now we're left with milliliters per hour. And we can go ahead and solve. 60 times 0 0.5 times 1 times 1,000 is 30,000. 1 times 1 times 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. 30,000 divided by 10,000 is 3. So our answer is three milliliters per hour. Let's go on to our next question. A client is being admitted to L&D for induction of labor using Pitocin. An IV has been started with a 16 gauge catheter. The fluid is LR, which is running at 125 milliliters an hour. Per protocol, 10 units of Pitocin is added to a 500 milliliter bag of D5LR and piggybacked into a primary IV line, which infuses by gravity. The IV pump for the Pitocin is set at 6 milliliters an hour. How many milliunits per minute of Pitocin is the patient receiving? In this problem, you're going to see that we've given some information that we don't need. One of them is right here, 125 milliliters per hour. But we will not be needing this for our problem because we're going on this new order. And this order is asking for milliunits per minute. For our conversion, we're going to need to know how many units are in a milliunit. And there is one unit in a thousand milliunits. We get that from our conversion table. And we'll be setting this up again in dimensional analysis. And this is how we will set up the problem. Again, I like to put my time conversion over to the left here, and you can do it any way you want. The second part of this formula here is our starting units of measure. We're going to start with the six milliunits per hour. We need to get into minutes. So we're going to put our conversion for time to the left here. Hours will go diagonal of each other so we can cross out hours. Now we're at milliliters per minute, and we need to be at milliunits per minute. In this one, we have milliliters in our ordered known volume and known dosage, so we will use that to cross out our milliliters to get to units. We put our milliliters diagonal each other, so we can cross out milliliters. And now we have units per minute. Again, need to get to milliunits per minute. So here is where we use our conversion. We need to cross out units to get to milliunits. And we're getting this from the conversion chart. And now we are in milliunits per minute, which is what the question is asking for. So we can go ahead and solve. 1 times 6 times 10 times 1,000 is 60,000. And then 60 times 1 times 500 times 1 is 30,000. 60,000 divided by 30,000 is 2. So our answer is 2 milliunits per minute is what the patient is receiving. Now let's go on to our last question. The physician ordered the Pitocin infusion to run at 16 milliunits per minute. The pharmacy sent up 10 units of Pitocin in 500 milliliters of D5LR. You would set your pump at how many milliliters per hour? We need to know how many units are in a milliunit to set up this problem. And from our conversion chart, there is one unit in 1,000 milliunits. Setting up this problem in dimensional analysis, the problem will look like this. Second part of my formula here is what the doctor ordered, which is 16 milliunits per minute. However, we need to be in hours, so my time conversion is over here to the left. Minutes is on top so that we can cross these units out, which leaves us in hours per milliunits. 
However, our final answer needs to be in milliliters per hour. So we need to convert to units because that is what is in our known dosage and known volume. So we get that from the conversion chart. We know that one unit is in a thousand milliunits. We put the milliunits on the bottom so we can cancel out those units. Now we are left with units per hour. We still have to get to milliliters per hour. Take the known dosage and volume. That is 500 milliliters in 10 units. Put the units on the bottom so that we can cross these out. Finally, we are left with milliliters per hour, which is what our question is asking for. So we can go ahead and solve. 60 times 16 times 1 times 500 is 480,000. And 1 times 1 times 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. And 480,000 divided by 10,000 is 48. And that is our answer, 48 milliliters per hour. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, come check out the rest of our channel, subscribe for free, and click the notification bell on the bottom. Also, come join our Facebook group for additional material and quizzes. Thank you.